Hello everyone, I am Dr. Archana R. I am an assistant professor in epidemiology at the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences. Now we are going to discuss an important topic about sample size calculation. At the end of this session, I would like all of you to be able to describe the general principles of sample size calculation, understand and describe the concept of power, describe the factors that influence sample size calculation and also know how to adjust for non-response and design effect. So what is the need for learning how to calculate sample size? Often when we do epidemiological studies, it is impossible to study the entire population of interest. That is why we often take a small sample and then generalize the findings to the population of interest. Sample derived this way should often be representative of the general population. Here in this figure, I would like to show you how from a single population of interest, we can draw several samples using the same sample size. Continuing with the need for calculating sample size, if your study is too small in size, that is, you end up studying less number of subjects, then often you will fail to detect important effects. You will obtain an imprecise estimate, by which I mean that the margin of error in your study would be larger than you would like it to be. Hence, this leads to a waste of resources and it is also unethical to study subjects and unlikely to be able to answer the study question. What if your sample size is much larger than what you would expect? This would lead to a waste of resources in terms of money, manpower, materials. You will also end up needing a larger budget which will reduce the chances of funding. So that's the need for sample size calculation. How do you approach sample size calculation is the next question. So sample size calculation often is based on the research question of interest. Usually in clinical studies, you will see that the research question is of two types. One is where you would be trying to estimate a single value of interest. It could be a mean of a specific, a mean like systolic blood pressure or it could be a proportion like prevalence of diabetes. The other thing that you would like to study is testing of hypothesis. This could be to test the effect of a new treatment or it could be to examine the association between a risk factor and an outcome of interest.